Hey folks, today we are going to talk about Nihilist Cipher. And we will look at a problem which appeared in uh, Southview, Ohio, Invitational. So that's what we are going to do today. Okay, so let's get started. This was the problem which appeared. Please decode the following quote from John Cocteau, which is encoded by Nihilist Cipher with a Polybius key, holidays, and a key blue. <clears throat> so let's first talk about the steps to decode a Nihilist Cipher. Right? There are five steps. So I'll go through those steps. The first step is to fill this five by five grid using the Polybius key. Right? That will Give us the numerical mapping for each alphabet. So that is the first step. Once we have that grid filled in, we will be able to find the numerical value for the key. Right here, the key is blue. We will be able to find the numerical value for the key. Once we do that, we will put the corresponding key value against each of these encoded numbers. Right, These numbers are encoded numbers out here. We will put the uh, we will put the corresponding key value against each of these encoded numbers. And then we will subtract the key value from the encoded number. So that would be the fourth step. And finally, once we have uh, the subtracted values, we will use the grid to translate the numbers back to the plain text. So let's get started. We will uh, start filling in the Polybus key in the grid. So here, holidays is the polybus key, right? So we start by filling in the rows, right? So we start with first row here, H-O-L-I. Uh, I, so I would represent, or the, this shell, this uh, cell would represent I and J both, right? So holly, and then we will have day, D here, and so forth. We can keep going. And finally, we will arrive at something like this, right? So once we, are done with the key, right, holidays, S ends here. We start with the start of the alphabet, right? So A is already covered here. So we start with B, C, D is also part of holidays. So D is here. So we skip D, E, F, G, H, so forth. So we fill in all the values in this uh, five by five grid. And that is the first step. So we have completed our first step here. Now we move on to the second step. And which is to find the numerical value for the key, right? So our key is blue. Uh, so we find where blue B appears, right? So B appears here, which is, so the numerical value for B is 24, second row and fourth column, right? That's how uh, the encoding is done. <clears throat> so encoding is done by using the row and column value of the alphabet. So in this case, B is equal to 24. So for the blue, so entire blue, the encoding would be 24. And for L, L is here. So L is 13, first row, second, third column, right? So the encoding for blue is 24, 13, 51, 31. That is the encoding. We will go ahead and place the key below the encoded value, which was provided. So we start placing the key, right? So once we run out of the key values, we repeat the key again, right? So we again start uh, with, uh, with 24, 13, and we keep on going so forth until we have put uh, the key value or the component of key value against each of these encoded uh, numbers, right? So similarly for the second row out here also, we'll go ahead and populate the key values. So it's just a running list, right, of uh, four, four numerical values which represent blue here, which was our key. Right? So once we are done with that, we move to the next step. And the next step here would be to subtract the key value from the encoded value, right? So, so we will have another row out here for subtraction. And so 59 minus 24 would be 35. 27 minus 13 would be 14, right? So, so we go ahead and start populating those values, right? And we continue doing this for the whole of the first row and the second row. If you're doing this along with me, I think that would make, uh, give provide you more value, right? So we would 
uh, go ahead go ahead and uh, put your subtraction values right along the way and then we will uh, check those values so in this case i'm just going ahead and uh, uh, populating the uh, the subtraction row out here i did it for the uh, first row here and then i'll go ahead and do it for the second row here so 96 minus 51 would be 45 76 minus 31 would be 45 again, right? So two 45s out here. And so we populate everything here. So this was the step four. We were able to subtract the encoded value or the key value from the encoded value to get our uh, subtraction uh, numeric value, which now we will translate back to the, uh, to the plain text by using this this five by five grid, which we have here. So now this is the final step. We are going back and translating it. So we see this, uh, the values 35. So 35 corresponds to third row and fifth column, right? So M. So M is the value for, or the plain text value for 35. So we'll start writing M out here, right? Similarly, 14 is the second letter out here. So 14 is first row and uh, fourth column. So it could be I or J, right? either of them. Probably I makes more sense out here. So we go ahead, use the other uh, five by five grid we created using the Polybus key, and we start translating those value or decoding those numeral numeric value back to the alphabets. So in this case, 44, R is four and four, 44 out here, right? So we, we keep doing something, uh, we keep doing this for the entire row. So I have here filled in everything for the entire row. We are getting some kind of a word out here. This seems like mirror or mirrors, right? Uh, this looks like wood. This looks like do. Mirrors would do well to, so you see that there is, there are, uh, words emerging from the from the whole set right so similarly we go ahead and uh, convert to plain text each of these numerical values and see what we get so if i go continue going here so 45 is t 4 and 4 or 4 and 5 so we start populating that 13 is 1 and 3 again l right so we could going and continue doing the whole thing. So now you see that apart from some of these things, mirrors would do well, right? We get some, some more words out here. This seems like longer. This seems like before, uh, back, right, images. So we are getting the, the plain text now. And if you see, if we color it, this is how it would appear. Mirrors would do well to reflect a little longer before sending back the images. So that was our, uh, that is our decoded text. So to kind of recap, what we did was we, we uh, got a nihilistic cipher, we had a Polybius key and we had a key value. So first thing we did was we build up this uh, five by five grid using the, starting with the Polybius key, right? We, so we wrote holidays here, and then we went ahead and picked up any alphabet from the start of the alphabet series, which were not part of the Polybius key, right? Wrote them down here. Then we uh, figured out, right, the code for blue, right? The code for blue here was this, <clears throat> and we just wrote the, down the key values right, uh, against each of the uh, encoded value, numeric value here, right? So we kind of wrote blue here. And then when that ended, we started again with BLUE, -E, right? So this is the pattern we continued with. And once that was done for, for all the numeric uh, encoded values, we started subtracting the encoded value or subtracting the key value from the encoded value, right? And once we got those numeric values here, we went back to our uh, our grid, five by five grid, and uh, translated the numeric value back to the plain text, which revealed uh, the overall plain text for the code for us.
I uh, hope this was helpful. Thank you.